Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. From this video, we are going to study about the analysis and design of one-way stack. In this chapter, we will cover the following topics. The first one is type of slabs, one-way and two-way. The second topic is design procedure for design of one-way slab. Then design of simply supported one-way slab, design of cantilever slab, design of continuous one-way slab, and finally the design of stair slab we will cover these topics in separate videos in this video we will discuss the very first topic which is type of slabs one way and two way slabs first of all what is slab the slab is a structural component which is broad flat and usually horizontal and provide useful surface at the top and open surface underneath so this is a broad flat and horizontal surface it provides a useful surface at the top and uh, open space underneath. So it is a structural member with thickness h less than b and l. So its thickness h is less than its width and its length. So if we talk about its supports, it may be supported by reinforced concrete beams. So we can have beams on all four sides of the slab. We can have masonry or reinforced concrete walls. The slab can be resting on the walls. The steel structural members, it can be supported by the steel structural member, for example, eye sections. It can be supported by the columns or directly supported by the columns. In that case, it will be termed as flat slab. So, as we can see in this figure, continuously by ground. So, sometimes slab can be resting on the ground. So, this is the case of foundations so if we talk about the slab panel so slab panel is defined as a slab portion bounded by the beams walls or columns so that small portion of the beam is termed as slab panel so for example we have this slab system so in this slab system this much portion this shaded portion is a slab panel it is bounded by the beams on all the four sides Okay, next is types of slabs. So based on the reinforcement provided, support conditions, and the ratio of the spans, slab can be divided into two types, generally one-way slab and two-way slab. So let's discuss in detail what is one-way slab and what is two-way slab. So one-way slab, a slab which resists the entire or major part of the applied load by bending in only one direction. So here in this figure we can see we have a slab panel which is supported by the walls on the two ends. So if a uniformly distributed load is acting on that slab panel, so it will bend only in one direction. There will be no bending in the second direction. So if a slab panel bend in only one direction, so then it will be termed as one-way slab. So how we will come to know that whether this slab panel will bend in one direction or two directions, so for that we have different criteria so for example if slab is supported on all four sides and its aspect ratio is less than 0 0.5 then it will behave as one way slab mean it will bend only in one direction so we can see over here so it is supported on all four sides and its aspect ratio mean its shorter side is shorter side to longer side ratio is less than 0 0.5 so in that case it will bend only in one direction there will be no bending in the other direction or we can define this r as the aspect ratio shorter side over longer side so in that case it should be less than 0 0.5 but if we consider longer side over shorter side so in that case it should be more than 2 so if the ratio of longer side to shorter side is more than 2 mean the length of the slab is more than the width of the slab so in that case it will be behaving like a one-way slab mean it will bend only in the one direction it will bend along the shorter direction and this shorter direction will be considered as the span of the slab slab having supports on less than four sides can be designed as one-way slab so for example if we have a slab and it is bounded or supported on three sides so then we can design this slab as a one-way slab but if the slab is supported on the two opposite edges so it will always be considered as one-way slab for example in this figure so 
it is ported on these two sides these two opposite sides so in that case it will be considered as one way slab and it will be bending in this one direction and this span the spacing between these ports will be considered as the span of the slab similarly if it is ported on the longer side so then this side will be considered as the span of the slab so cantilever slab is also always considered as a one way slab so it will always bend in one direction so cantilever beam or cantilever slab will only bend in one direction there will be no bending in the second direction so let's see some examples of one way slab in the real structures so sheds in the roofing system so they are always one way so if we have a slab supported by the walls for example like this and we have this portion a shed extended beyond this support or beyond this wall so this shed will be considered as a this much portion will be considered as one way slab this shed portion similarly slab of stairs so slab of stair is normally supported on the ends mean at the start and at the end of the slab so if we see in the section so we will have the situation like this so here we have actually steps so this is the slab of the stair and it is supported at this end mean by this vertical wall and by this horizontal slab and sometimes we also have some beam over here so it's always supported by the always supported at the ends so that's why it will be a slab which is supported at the end and it will be considered as one way slab and it will be bending in this direction so this much will be its span so this much will be its span this much okay strip footing so in case of strip footing we have the case of one way slab for example if we have this strip footing i mean a uh, footing which is supporting the wall so this side as well as this side these both sides will be considered as one way slab separately and will be designed as a one way slab similarly cantilever retaining wall so this is a case similar to that of the footing so here in case of cantilever we have actually one side longer and the other side side smaller and similarly this vertical wall or stem is also considered as a slab so we can consider this stem as a one way slab similarly the foundation we can also consider it as a one way slab the both side this side as well as this side okay can beams are wall supported slab with r less than 0.5 aspect ratio less than 0.5 so in case of beam supported slab so if the aspect ratio is 0.5 so we will have a one way slab similarly slab band system so actually band is a modified shape of beam so in case of beam we have a larger depth but smaller width but in case of bands we have larger width but smaller depth so in case of band slab system we have bands running along the line of the columns but in case of beam column system we have beams running along the columns so if we have these bands running along the line of columns central 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 line along the central line of the columns and it these bands are only in one direction so then this beam or this slab in between these two bands will be considered as one way slab so this slab if we see in this figure so this much slab will be considered as one way slab so it will be bending in this direction similarly ribbed supported slab or jai slab so sometime in case of beam column slab we have primary beams along the central line of the columns but in case of secondary beams we provide a joist a thin beams having larger depth but smaller width and these are closely spaced so in that case the slab panel in between these joists will be considered as one way slab because we have closely spaced joists so the slab in between these joists will be considered as one way slab because 
it will have longer length but shorter width okay next is two way slab the slab which resists the applied load by bending in two directions so that will be termed as two way slab so if we have a square slab and we apply a uniformly distributed load on it so it will bend in both directions so if it is bending in both the directions it means it is resisting the load in both the directions so how we will come to know that whether the slab is a one way or two way so again we have these criteria if the slab is supported on all four sides and aspect ratio is more than 0.5 then it will behave as a two way slab mean if this condition satisfies satisfies so it mean it will bend in two directions and it will resist the applied load in two directions again the aspect ratio is shorter side over longer side ratio it is if it is more than 0.5 then it is a two way slab so slab with two adjacent edges supported is always two way slab so this is the first case if it is supported on all four sides but and the aspect ratio is more than 0.5 then it will be a two way slab or otherwise if a slab is supported on only two sides two adjacent sides so in that case it will always be considered as a two way slab so it will bend in this direction as well as in this direction oh sorry its bending will be just like a cantilever for this side and cantilever for this side okay let's see some examples of two way slab so first is beam or wall supported slab with r greater than 0.5 so if we have a slab system with beams in both the direction and r is aspect ratio of each panel is more than 0.5 then that panel or that slab will be considered as a two way slab similarly slab slab band system so if we have bands in both the directions mean in both the perpendicular direction in this direction as well as in this direction and the panel inside these bands have a aspect ratio more than 0.5 so in that case it will be considered as a two way slab so we need to see both the condition that the bands should be in two perpendicular direction and the panel inside those band should have the aspect ratio more than 0.5 then it will be considered as a two way slab the next is ribbed supported slab or joist slab with end beam so sometime we have end beams are the beams running along the line of the columns as a primary beam and as a secondary beam we have the joist and if the joists are provided in two perpendicular directions so then we can have the scenario that the span or the panel in between these joist can have the aspect ratio more than 0.5 and then it will be considered as a two way slab so slab bounded by these joist if it is it has r greater than 0.5 then it will be considered as a two way slab so sometime we can not have the primary beam we have only joist and we have only the beams at the ends in between we have columns and joist in two perpendicular directions and then the span in between these joist if the r for this panel is more than 0.5 then it will be considered as a two way slab or two way panel okay, next is waffle slab or grid slab so it is actually a column supported slab without the primary or secondary beams and we have closely spaced smaller ribs in two perpendicular directions so such type of slab is termed as waffle slab so we have ribs in two perpendicular direction and we don't have edge beam or the beams running along the line of columns so in that case it will be termed as a waffle slab or we can say that we have a flat plate with a larger depth and we have cut some portion of the slab on the bottom side or on the tension side of the slab to create the cavities so in that case the solid portion will be actually behaving like the ribs so such type of slab is termed as waffle slabs 
Next is flat plate or column. It is a column supported slab. It has no beam. The flat plate has no beam. It is only resting on the columns. And flat plate with the drop panels. So sometimes we can have the drop panels or we can have the enlarged depth of the or the thickness of the slab at the periphery of the column so that is termed as the drop panel or we can have the enlarged head of the column so these are actually provided to avoid the shear or the punching of the slab and such slab with the drop panel or cal column capital is termed as flat plate with drop panel or with column capitals and it will be always considered as a two-way slab this flat slab as well as this flat slab with drop panels and column capital it will be considered as two-way slab uh, here are some other types of the slabs irrespective of the aspect ratio or the one way or two way we have some other types based on the position of the beams so first of all is flat plate so this is a slab without any beams it is directly resting on the column the second is flat plate with column capitals so we have a flat plate and with column capitals the enlarged head of the column and the next c is flat plate with the drop panel enlarged thickness of the slab in the periphery of the column then the fourth is slab with bands in one direction so if we can we have bands in one direction then it will be termed as slab with band in one direction and it will be considered as one way the next is slab with beams in one direction so we can have beams in one direction then again it will be considered as one way so we can have slab with beam in both directions as the case in the figure f so we can have primary beams running along the line of the columns and we can have secondary beams which are resting on the primary beams. The next is waffle slab. So this is a flat plate actually with ribs provided in two perpendicular directions. Closely spaced smaller ribs provided in two perpendicular directions. The last is ribbed slab, a slab which is resting on the primary beams and in the secondary direction or in the perpendicular direction we have just closely spaced just in case of, instead of secondary beams so it is termed as ribbed slab thank you very much for watching this video in the next video we will discuss the design procedure for one way slab